talk to me about how you reflect on your relationship with Kai Green because people call yeah. it the greatest rivalry in bodybuilding and it's then the stakes are raised with Generation yeah. Iron. <laughs> it's the inception of social media. Right. Talk to me about that relationship with Kai Green. I think it's I think it is the greatest rivalry. I think it's bigger than Jay and Ronnie's just because they were friends. We weren't. And I think we wanted to be friends, Kai and I, but I feel like because of we wanted us both wanting something so freaking bad and during the social media era, one camp, the other camp, they're talking so much and we can see the chatter that it kind of made it look like, so you don't like me, Chris? Okay, uh, it's like high school, you know what I mean? Like, you talking shit? And then all you do is look at me weird and I'm like, all right, what's up? So I know that Kai had to play psychological warfare because this is bodybuilding. It's not MMA. It's not boxing. You know, like it's not even basketball or football, right? It's just a person lifting weights and dieting and doing heavy amounts of cardio and posing. That is hard to impose your will on someone physically. So mm. you got to figure out how he can beat me. So for him to start a fight, you know, like in 2014, flipping the hair and all this other stuff. I don't blame them. People used to get mad at me for like accepting it. Like in my like friend circle, they're like, man, like you're just cool Push with this. Back. But I said, I expected it. They're like, how'd you, why'd you expect this? I said, listen, it all started at the damn press conference. But I knew he was going to do something. I didn't know what I was going to respond by saying the three facts and all this other stuff. Because he'd, he'd signed his name. Oh yeah, as Mister Olympia. Yeah, he started doing on your like over your so, face or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a we have an Olympia poster that comes out every year. So when we get our Olympia credentials, you know, our per diem, all that good stuff, we have to sign a bunch of merchandise. One of it is like a big ass poster that we give all the VIP holders. So, you know, of course, you know. I'm like, it's front and center. So people are going to sign like maybe the leg or this and that. This fool like took on the face. I'm like, oh, it's like that. And he wrote Mr. Olympia. I'm like, okay. How many times did he do it? For like a whole row of them. I'm like, oh, he's trying to send a message. So, uh, you know, basketball mentality comes out right now. It's like, oh, this is, oh, the, the, I love it. The disrespect. I love it. Like now I get to make this more intentional. And he has no idea what I look like. He's then going to try to probably say something at this press conference. Why? Because that's what I would do. Know thyself. Know your opponent. Know how to respond versus react. See, when you don't play through these things and when you only get fixated on how much food and water do I drink and yes, I have to do this mundane stuff, you need to work on the mind of figuring out all the different permutations that can exist, all the different scenarios that can happen. That way, you know how to handle yourself and anything that comes towards you. So I, get, I gave him what he needed at the press conference, and he had nothing to say after that. And that's when I knew the only thing left was for him to try to do something physical. And I handled it well. And unfortunately, that was like the end of that prejudging. Yeah, they split you apart, right? Yeah. They put Dennis Wolf in between you and yeah, no, one's, so, no one's walking through him. I mean, it, in a way, it was, it, was, it was effed up because I'm like, we're not performing now. Um, and it was a big adrenaline dump as well for he and I both. I know he probably had it because I, I was going to say. It. So talk, talk to me. You're you're on stage. You've worked toward this thing for ages. Generation Iron is out. Yeah, it's already now. out for the second year. Yeah. So you've got the rivalry is not only private; it's public. Yep. You've had him signing his name on your face, <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah. on posters. You've had him talking shit at the press conference. Yep. And then you get on stage and he's got this like predator ponytail thing yeah. that he whips and hits you with. And then- Has at, something to say. And you then know? you sort of jostle against each other. And then there's this legendary photo of you finally turning and looking. And it's you guys face to face on the Olympic yeah. stage. What's that emotional dump like with all of this pressure and all of this preparation coming it, up? It's, it felt like high school when everybody's like, fight, 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 fight. And then- you're basically getting into it. And then there, and then it was the fans energy that I felt that got calm because all you could hear is if you, if you, if you were there, you would be able to hear Steve Weinberger's voice get elevated and they turned the music up louder because they wanted, I, I guess they were trying to drown out the crowd noise. Like, like it was cheering it on because they kind of were. And then I realized 
two big ass dudes oiled up in posing trunks supposed to fight? <laughs> nah. You're not paying enough for this. Nah, exactly. Someone's getting their drawers pulled out. You know, something, <laughs> something hey, it ain't happening. That's not the fight that I signed up for. So uh let's go ahead and calm this shit down and yeah. get back to work. Dennis, get in here. But you're right. So I realized right then and there the fans really messed this up because the fans were egging us on for two two years now because you got to think uh 2012 there was a moment where he, kai and i are posing you know you do the back shots and i used to always kind of like that, that was in 2013 so uh. 2012 we're doing a back shot and i look back no i look like this and i'm kind of like looking at the glutes because it's kind of like letting the judges know he ain't got what i got so i was like come on man Oh, you slapped him on the ass? I, I kind of like touch like touch his lower back or something like that. Should have like, slapped him on the ass. And then uh so then he was he there's a picture of him like looking at he was gonna punch me. Yes. Yes. So no one remembers this, right? But but you know what it did? That was the no flinch with Matt Barnes versus Kobe. <laughs> so I was like, yes, I got him. Yep. Now yep. I'm in his head. He wants to like, you know, all right, 2013 Arnold Classic. Uh, Madrid that's when we're doing this and he's just pissed and I'm like got him how do you think so it, it seems like your ability to deal with discomfort both psychological physical it's balanced I, I think discomfort in the time but it doesn't seem to echo you don't seem to ruminate beyond what you need to to learn the lessons right what do you know about how Kai felt during this rivalry well, he had to feel, I mean, of course he's going to feel robbed, right? Because he's going to think, well, I look good too. I put in so much effort. I've gone through so many, level, so many levels of adversity. I deserve this. And I'm only one person away. One person away. And then once I got him out of my way, I can have everything I've ever wanted. I get to now, every time I see Phil Heath, I see success. I see what life has presented him and what he's been able to experience. And I can't have the same thing without going through him. I got to go through him. So there's a level of empathy I have even now. Like, I, I realize that. Have you ever that. spoken to him? Ever yeah, we've, you know, it's very interesting is that we've had a few conversations. Kai Green gets credit for me because he was the first athlete in the IFBB to call me after I lost in 2018. And he was the only one. He was the only one that picked up the phone and we talked at length and that made me feel, I mean, it wasn't like an emotional, like, like I'm going to cry. It was more like the person who knows me the most is the one that I battled against the most. Right. And he basically gave me some, some much needed words of like, Phil, they didn't beat Phil that I know. They beat an injured one. You're still the best ever. And to hear that, you know, it, it made me feel good because, well, in my opinion, he was right. And he would, he would know that because he was, he knew who, what he was going against. And he knows that, man, if, if, Imagine the amount of stress Phil had to go through, and I need to I need to reach out to him and let him know like yeah. everything's cool, man. Well, you, I, you're gonna be okay. Like, and he's already he was mind you, 2018. I mean, he was already four years removed or three years removed because he did the Arnold Australia, I believe, in 2015. Um, so he had already started that transition away. Yeah, and I had yet to decide if that was what I wanted to do. So he was giving me an option on that phone call of saying, Phil, now you're at this point where. You don't have to prove yourself to anyone. Um, the judges can do whatever the hell they want. You've solidified yourself. Like, I respect you. And I thought, damn, like, thank you. And, you know, since then, I mean, we've always had that, you know, casual. I mean, now, granted, during the conversation, there was still F you, Phil, and this and that and the <laughs> other, you know, just because we can't, it's like, we can't be like, Hallmark cards and roses and shit. We still got to be like, I respect you, but fuck you, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I'm cool with it. I saw Kai last year at the Gym Shark event here in California, and we both were just like, 
there's just that vibe. And we both know that it's cool. It's cool to be like him saying, fuck you, Phil Heath. And I said, fuck you, Kai. You know what I mean? Like, it's all, and you know, it's funny. That's like, sweet. Yeah. It's like a term of endearment. Yep. And fans, though, like when they see us in the room, like everyone would get quiet. Oh, they think there's still they genuine still, animosity. And there isn't. There's more respect than anything because that's what it should be. But it always was. It's just that when you're battling, we respected the game. When when I don't think people have seen, I mean, outside of a, a Jay and, and Ronnie situation, two highly competitive people that were boisterous about what they wanted. Yeah. We were extremely boisterous. And if that meant that we ruffled the feathers of the opposite team, we didn't give a shit. We just didn't. We couldn't because we needed their support. We needed those fans sometimes to remind us like, yeah, man, like, okay, we got this. I mean, I would see people arguing at the Olympia Expo over who's going to win and this and that. Kai's fans coming up talking trash. And I'm like, I remember posing in the audience and people would, you know, say stuff. And I'm like, what happened to your boy? You know, and then the fans were like, ooh, and, and it was like the, so it was like some WWE yeah, uh, right. stuff. Correct. And as much as some fans want to make it seem like, for me, I was being like extremely like negative or whatever, I was playing along just like them. Because at the same time, I mean, we're providing sports entertainment. And if I can have a little fun with a troll online, I'm going to do it, you know, like, and, and, uh, cause I should have fun. I should have fun with this. This is great. Like, it's really cool that I can, have certain types of powers that I can literally transform my physique into something that no one could ever imagine. Well, think about it this way as well, that it's not just the enjoyment of being the sportsman, but it's the enjoyment of being a personality as well, mm -hmm. of you know developing a brand. And if the brand for a short amount of time is to be the villain, like no one, no one looks back. Floyd Mayweather, you know, like played for a very long time. I, he, they did a... He fought on Cinco de Mayo and called it Cinco de Mayweather. Yeah. And came out with, with the, the sombrero. Yep. Yeah. And like, just a professional troll before the word troll exists. That's right. Right. Do it. And now looking back, people are like, I mean, some of his most recent fights, maybe he's padded his right. uh, record a little bit. But uh, I think that playing that heel and doing that is, I don't know, if you have the psychology to be able to absorb it yes. and, and stay equanimous yeah i think that that makes for a, a much more exciting it, it the greatest rivalry in bodybuilding right yeah. it wouldn't have existed had no. you not have had the rivalry yeah right it's not no. it wasn't because of the bodies maybe it was in some regards but it was because of the personalities yeah that was what made it happen and it, and it drove competitiveness how much better do you think you became because of kai green Oh, extremely. I mean, every year it was like, you get to see him guest pose on the circuit and you're like, oh shit. Did you respect his, his physique? Oh, for, of course. I, I knew, I respected it all the time. The problem is, is that just because I respect it and I have an opinion of it, like parts of me was like, gosh, all he had to do was be who he was when he did those Arnold classics and the 2012 Olympia, and he might've got me. Maybe what not. What was the difference? Because he got bigger, and he was trying to manage, uh, uh, manage too much size. Kai Green is probably, probably, if not the most dense bodybuilder we have ever seen. That includes Coleman, like density-wise, because you gotta think he was shorter than Coleman, weighed as much, nearly as much, and it was like deep separate, deep cuts, like deep, deep, like very, like slabs of beef, like when he does the, pulling the elbows back and you see the christmas tree thick striated lats um just very deep now he lacked the chest size and the depth with, with that and the shoulders so that's why coleman would get the edge but you know people think of dorian yates like being very dense if we could see those two up on stage together i'm telling you right now kai green like because of the quads because of the side of the, the hamstring the hanging of the forget it it was just slabs of beef dude like this is a guy you've seen him walk around off season and and every 3x pants that he's wearing looks like they're leggings <laughs> i mean it just is amazing and he was able to keep this condition throughout the entire bodybuilding season so i i would always look at him and say well you're you're not focusing on one major thing and that is the peak and bodybuilding is about the peaking you can run the 100 meters in the semifinals and break the world record but wouldn't you rather do it in an olympic final i'd rather do it in an olympic final 
It's more significant then. And it takes more discipline. It takes more strategy. So that's where I, I looked at bodybuilding. It's like, everything is a strategy. Everything is a process leading up to two days. That's it. All I got to do is be ready for two days. And that, you know, I was able to do that obviously countless times, but yeah, uh, did he raise my game level up? Absolutely. And I, and I benefit from it. In other news, this episode is brought to you by Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything that you need and nothing that you don't. It's a healthy alternative to sugary electrolyte drinks, and it is the best way that I have started my morning every single day for over three years now. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium with no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, or any other junk. Your adenosine system that caffeine acts on isn't active for the first 90 minutes of the day, but your adrenal system is, and salt acts on your adrenal system. So if you want to be more awake, want to regulate your appetite, curb cravings, and have better brain health, this is the way to start your day. Head to drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom to get a free sample pack of all eight flavors with your first box. Plus there is a no BS, no questions asked refund policy, so you can buy it 100% risk-free. That's drinklmnt.com slash modern wisdom thank you very much for tuning in if you enjoyed that clip with phil then press here for the full length two hour podcast episode when we go so deep in the history of his career his reflections on generation i and the peds that he did and did not use plus his 10 best exercises for men to build muscle 